Welcome back to the Mock Miller YouTube channel, Home Brewers, and this is part two of our epic Brewzilla Firmzilla Kegland brew. So we're done with brew day, right? And this is all about fermentation now. So we're gonna be talking about what we're gonna be using to ferment our beer in and how we're gonna monitor it. Rob, what are we using? 27 litre triconical Firmzilla. We're loving this product. Yeah, absolutely. And we are using the version that has the pressure kit as well, yep. so that we can actually uh, ferment under pressure. And we're also gonna be using the wrapped Hill to monitor our fermentation progress. What does that actually monitor, James? So the rat is going to be able to monitor the uh, specific gravity yep. within your fermenting work, and it's also going to be able to monitor the temperature. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, Kegland do some awesome products that allow you to connect that within the rat ecosystem to control things like their temperature controller, which is certainly something we want to look to bring in in the future. Yeah, sure. Um, but. In this instance, we're gonna be able to get live data so we can uh, manually control things like the temperature um, and just, just track that fermentation, you know? What I love about using wireless hydrometers is that, you know, when you've got it into your work, you can tell when fermentation has started yeah. and you can tell when it's finished as well. So it really limits the amount of samples that you need to take during fermentation to see how things are progressing, yeah. which ultimately means more beer to drink at the end. Exactly, and actually we can just leave this completely covered and work out what's going on by the use of the pill, ideal. Let's take a close look then at the features of the Firmzilla first and foremost. Now we have the pressure set up with this, okay? Because actually if you buy yeah. a tank like this, you wanna be able to use it for its primary feature, which is pressurized fermentation and low oxygen fermentation. So starting at the top, talk us through what we've got going on. We've got the two part lid here and we've got two ports for the carbonation for the carbonation caps. One is the beer out with the floating dip tube system yes. that we've talked about previously. Yeah, and it's got a really nice little filter on the end of that, hasn't it? A little yeah, wire it works filter. well. And we've got one for gas in and out, and we've got our spunding valve connected up to the gas out port. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna be able to control the, uh, the pressure within the tank for fermentation. Now we've got videos that have covered kind of that sort of stuff before, but ultimately if you wanna produce something quick with low esters, then you ferment at a higher uh, pressure. Yep. If you wanna just ferment with low oxygen, um, then you ferment at a much lower pressure, right? Exactly that, but then actually you can whack the spunding valve up towards the end of fermentation so that it, the product naturally carbonates. Yes, exactly. We've also got the stainless steel handles on here, makes it really easy if we do need to lift it up out of its stand. Yeah, move it around. Moving down, we've got the really big three inch tri-clamp dump valve. Yeah, I mean, this is an awesome feature having that size kind of port at the bottom, right? It, it gives us access to loads of different features that we can use whilst we're fermenting. So we can put in dry hops in the bottom here. Yeah. And obviously because the collection container has got ports on it as well, yeah. we can use those ports to be able to clear the collection vessel of oxygen before we dry hop, for example. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And actually, you just use exactly the same um, carbonation caps, don't you? You put them on there, purge it with CO2, put it into place, open it up, those hops get drawn into suspension within the beer. And that collection vessel is made of a product called Triton. Now we have spoken about this before. It can be boiled, um, which is great because we can make sure it's completely sanitary before using it. Also sits on the work whipper. Yeah, so <laughs> for making those yeast starters. I know, that's yeah. fantastic. So really could actually, cool. we could put our yeast, we can make a yeast starter in there, connect it to the bottom, dump the wort on top, bosh, you're away. Yeah, and it also comes with a blanking plate, doesn't it? So that if you do want to seal it um, before you're connecting it up, so you've got your yeast starter there, maybe you want to just cap it for a little bit yep. while you're moving it around, or you've got your hops in place, you want to maybe purge them with CO2 elsewhere before you put it on. Yeah. It just gives you that option to cap the lid um, or cap the bottom of the tank as well. Yeah, it works really well. So obviously it comes in a nice solid construction stainless steel stand here as well with the handles. Yeah, which again, moving it around the brewery yeah. makes it nice and easy. I mean, the, the 27 litre isn't gonna be, well, I mean, it's gonna be 25 kilos or so once it's full with work, yeah. but you can pick it up and yeah, move indeed. it around if you need to, which is a really nice feature. 
one thing that we have to touch on with all of these crystal clear fermenters is beer doesn't like to be in a clear fermenter. No, no, no. no. We need to make sure that it's protected from light strike. Yeah. So we don't get skunking in the beer. Nobody wants that flavor in their finished beer, right? No, it's awful. And it happens really quickly. And the hoppier the beer inside, the quicker it can happen. So we really have to protect it against light right from the get go. So that's the features then of the Firmzilla that we've been through. Now, over the other side of the camera, we have our wort down to temperature in our Bruzilla from part one. Be sure to check that out. What we're gonna do now though, is just get this ready to receive the wort. So what do we need to do, Rob? Well, we've taken the collection vessel off the bottom and put the blanking plate on because yep. for the time being, we don't need that. Uh, we are gonna open it up. We're gonna put three liters of sanitizer in there, sanitizer in there. We're then gonna shake shake it up completely, make sure every single surface on the inside is coated, and then we're gonna push some of that sanitizer out using CO2 to make sure that all of the tubing is sanitized. Excellent, shall I take the ring off of here? Exactly. Let's take that off of there. In goes our mixed up sanitizer. So if no rinse sanitizer, you can use Star San, you can use Chem San, any of the no rinse sanitizers. Yeah, they're all gonna do the same job. All right, do you wanna do the honors? Yeah, I can do that. So we just wanna make sure that it, every single surface Every single surface is coated. That's cool, we're not worrying about the foam. Just need to leave it for a few moments, don't we, to let the sanitizer do its thing, while we go and grab our gas line to push the uh, sanitizer out. Let's go and do that. Right, let's get the sanitizer out. So first things first, take our spunding valve off, because that's where our gas line needs to go. Pop that on there. Yeah. All right, um, turn the gas bottle on, and just add some gas. We don't need much, it's just... Um... Just enough to add a bit of top pressure, right? Yeah, yeah. That did the job. Yeah. And we don't need to push it all out. No, it's using. just about getting enough out to clean the, uh, sanitize the line. Exactly right? that, yeah. So we can dispose of that now. So you've got a bit of beer line attached to a disconnect there. I have. Pass me the end and I'll make sure it goes into the jug so, <laughs> that, uh, so <laughs> that we don't all get wet. And I'm just going to squash it on there now. Boom. There we go, and we can see the sanitizer's now flowing freely through. Any keg, this is how we do it. Yeah. Fill it full of uh, fill it full of sanitizer, pump it out using, uh, push it out using CO2. Just know that all of the inside is then fully sanitized. See, the other thing I like about doing this is actually it proves that this uh, float is all working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it yeah. proves that it's all... Well, and also that all your seals are good as well. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay, there we go. We're blowing through the last of the sanitizer and the CO2 now. Right, we can actually use the um, PRV as well, can't we? Yeah, just to dump out the last of the pressure. Right, just take off the line. And we now know that we are good to go in here, right? Yeah. Actually, uh, we've also got the jug there that's full of sanitizer. So when we want to take the lid off, we just put it directly into that jug of sanitizer. Yeah, absolutely. Right, should we move over, flip sides, and actually get our work into here? Let's do it. Now that's our brew day done, Rob, with the Bruzilla. If you haven't watched part one of this series, make sure you check it out. I'll put a link up here for you where we brewed the work that's in here using the firm, uh, the Bruzilla from Kegland. Yeah. Now, Rob, we're on to the fun stuff. We've added our yeast to the fermenter. One thing, transferring into this was a doddle as well, wasn't it? Yeah, actually, the pump on the uh, on the Bruzilla's really nice and strong, actually, and it did it really quickly enough, actually, to gets a bit of aeration on there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. we've got our aerated wort that's had our yeast added. Now we need to add our wrapped pill so that we can track the fermentation during the next little while. Now I have already set this wrapped pill up, but we're gonna have a quick cutaway so we can talk you through the setup process so that actually you've got a bit of a step-by-step -step guide so that you can get to this point really easily. So stick around. Setting up our wrapped pill is relatively straightforward. The first thing we need to do is unscrew the housing that contains the main board and the battery, remove that from the housing, 
make sure we've removed the battery tab, which is located at the bottom here, and plug in to the charge port, which is USB-C on the main board. It's gonna need 24 hours to fully charge. Once it's been charged completely, navigate to where you would normally join Wi-Fi networks on your device. Choose the network that's being broadcast by the wrap pill. You'll come up with an on-screen prompt to join the network which you would like the pill to be registered to. Put in the password, hit join, and then after a moment, it'll tell you we're done. Go to the wrapped app or the wrapped app website, log in with your credentials, and you'll now have the option to choose register device, choose the wrap pill, follow the on-screen prompt. Now you're gonna be asked for a MAC address and validation code, which can be found back in the network, which is being broadcast by the pill. At the bottom there, choose registration, and there we can see is the MAC address and the validation code will appear in a moment. Now I'm taking a screenshot here because I can copy and paste these details from that screenshot right back into the wrapped portal. So we copy, first of all, the MAC address, paste that into this field here, and then we do the same with the validation code. Now these are gonna be unique for each different device when you're going through the setup process. Tap done, choose forward again, and it will now ask us to name our wrapped pill. We're gonna call this one Little Reiki. Tap done, tap the tick. It's now gonna register the pill. This might take a moment or two, but once it goes green, you know that it's there. Now we're gonna go on to calibrating our pill now. Build the housing again. Make sure that the seals are done fully up. So you need to pass the first O-ring there and screw it all the way up to the second O-ring. That's gonna give us a nice watertight seal. Now we're ready to calibrate. We need a jug of water big enough to house the pill whilst it's uh, being calibrated. Now we go back to the wrap pill network. Choose that again. It will bring up this screen again. We're gonna choose calibration at the bottom. Choose standard calibration. Now, once we've chosen that, we're gonna put the pill into the jug of water. It's gonna to need to sit in there for a few moments just to settle down, stop bobbing around so that the angle is uh, precise and not moving about. Once that's the case, tap calibrate on the screen. It's gonna go through the progress bar, which is gonna take a few moments to do. Once it hits 100%, we're then ready to add our wrap pill into our fermenter and start tracking our fermentation. Once we have finished setting up and calibrating our pill, we need to add it to the fermenter. So we've got a little jug of sanitizer there yep. that we've, uh, we've put the pill in just to make sure that everything is sanitary before it goes in. Just lift that up slightly and I'll uh, pop it in, yeah? Yeah, ready? Yeah. Well, wow. in it goes. Now, the pill is gonna give us live readings of both the temperature inside the fermenter and also the specific gravity throughout our fermentation. So we're gonna be able to see the pro progress that it's making and also, most importantly, when it's finished fermenting, okay? Um, now, we touched a little bit there on temperature. So the pill is gonna give us uh, temperature readings, right, Rob? Yeah, we need to keep this warm yeah because we're in a ambient warehouse actually it's freezing yeah yeah <laughs> ambient warehouse um we've got this new heat wrap and we've already tested this out it's absolutely fantastic it really is yeah and what what we love about it is that um it is what we call low watt density yeah which means that the heating elements are spread over this huge surface yeah. area what's the benefit for that well, actually it's designed for these plastic fermenters because obviously, you know, a heat belt, even a 30 watt heat belt, um, there's quite a direct heat, so it can affect the integrity of the plastic. This is absolutely guaranteed for this product. In fact, Kegland have said it's even okay if the product was empty, not you'd ever use it on the empty product, but that's how, that's how gentle it is. But because it's over such a, a large surface area, a lot of very gentle heat, 
it's actually proved a really, really good product. Yeah, um, what we're gonna do is, because it is November, it is cold in the warehouse, we don't need to worry too much about having this, uh, having like a, a cooling solution, no. such as like a fermentation fridge. No, because it's so cold in here, it will literally just crash cold, yeah. crash cold. Um, <laughs> but what we are gonna do is plug the um, heat belt into a, um, a, a heating controller, temperature controller, probably an ink bird, just to make sure that we don't go above our ideal fermentation temperature, which for this beer is going to be 20 degrees. Now, I know I keep banging on about this, James, but one of the things that I don't like about these plastic fermenters is they are clear and that work has to stay dark. Yeah, we don't want light strike, right? No. But we've got a clever solution for that. Uh, I'm going to just move this box out of the way. Rob, do you want to grab our clever solution for keeping this dark? Ta-da! The box. The box. Now you might have a different solution at home, but actually we've done this quite a few times. Yeah, we are. Absolutely it's fine. That's a treat. Now we have a couple of other things that we're going to need to do to this beer throughout its fermentation, right? One of which is cold crash, so we'll just turn the heat off. That will cool it down at the oh, end. Yeah. But also towards the end of fermentation, we've got a dry hop. And we're going to show you how to dry hop this beer in a minute. So it's been about a week since we pitched our yeast into our Firmzilla. How did fermentation go? Well, so far, so good, Rob. I've been yeah. able to track it using the wrap pill. Yeah. I've been able to keep an eye on the specific gravity and the temperature. And I have to say, the um, Kegland heat wrap that we've used on this as well has done a fantastic job at maintaining the temperature. All we did was put that round it and the cardboard box over the top. And it's been absolutely fine. We went for 22 degrees, actually, because we were using WHC saturated. Yeah. We actually wanted to see how that um, affects like the overall profile at the end of fermentation, pushing it to a slightly warmer temperature. It's it's been really good, really I'm, good. I'm actually really impressed with that uh, that fermentation heater because it's been freezing in here, and uh, yeah, it's kept it kept it at a, a good temperature. So it's been really good. Yeah, it really has. And what's been cool is being able to go into the wrapped portal and keep an eye on the fermentation in there, see where the gravity's at, see what the temperatures yeah. are from the comfort of my home while uh, this has been connected to our Wi-Fi here. So we have dumped the trub. Yeah. We have, we are now gonna dry hop. So we've put our dry hops into the collection vessel. Yeah, our sanitized collection vessel. Indeed, and we have flushed it with CO2 so that we know that there's no oxygen left in there. Yeah, and the way we did that is that once we'd got the dry hops in and connected it via the tri clamp, we connected the CO2 to the bottom port yep. and the top port, we actually put a disconnect yeah, a on yeah. just so that you don't build up too much pressure in there and it is pushing any air out and leaving CO2 in. Yeah. We've added a tiny amount of top pressure to the um, fermenter as well. Yeah, we've done that so that when you open the bottom valve, it doesn't sort of suck collapse. Yeah. The... yeah, so we are now ready to dry hop. So how are we gonna do that? Right, we're gonna open the we're going to open the bottom dump valve. That's going to, well, we'll see what it's going to do to the to the dry hops. We also can give it some help by blowing more CO2 into the bottom port. Should move things around a little and get those into suspension. Nice. Do you want to do the honours? I'm doing it. Oh, look at it go. There we go. And you can actually see them coming up through the collar here into the fermenter as well. That worked an absolute treat. Now, that was with a relatively small dry hop, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was about 25, 30 grams. Yeah, so with uh, a larger amount, um, we might need to actually blow some CO2 into there as well, but actually, as it stands, I'm happy that there's nothing left in there. So now that our hops are in there, we're gonna leave it for a couple of days, aren't we, Rob? Then we're gonna um, just literally take the heater off to let the beer cold crash that's going to let all the last of the yeast sink to the bottom. That's going to let the hops sink to the bottom. Yeah. We'll be able to take that off again if we wish to by closing up the valve and taking off the uh, the port, uh, the collection vessel at the bottom. Yeah. And then we're going to be moving on to packaging. Now, how would you package from this, Rob? That's the beauty of this. We can use what we call a jumper line. So it is beer out on this vessel to the beer out on the keg. Yep. So it treats the beer as gently as possible. We just add some pressure to here. Uh, it will push the beer out into the keg, job done. So some final thoughts then as we wrap things up on our epic two-part Bruzilla, Firmzilla, wrapped pill, all things Kegland video. Um, Rob, how have you found the Firmzilla? I think it's been really good. Uh, 
my one thing about it is the fact that it's clear and you have to concentrate on keeping the beer dark for as much of the time as possible yes um we've done a we've done a type of beer that's not massively hot but the more hot the beer the more you have to worry about that yeah putting that aside i'm absolutely delighted with it it's really gentle on the beer being able to dry hop oxygen free and transfer oxygen free and if we wanted to we could have use the last bit of fermentation to carbonate it in here although we've not pressure fermented as such we would have been able to use the last bit of fermentation to pressurize and carbonate the beer in here and we could have served out of here as well yeah so actually as a very flexible fermentation and serving vessel I'm absolutely delighted with it. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please make sure that you subscribe to our channel and you've hit the bell for notifications. We've got stack loads of content all about home brewing on our YouTube channel. And also, if you've got experience brewing on either a Brewzilla, a Firmzilla, using the Rat Pill, or you've got questions about any of those systems, please drop a comment below. We'd love to hear from you so we can either come back to you with our thoughts or we can share your experiences with our customers. And of course, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.